Hello guys, how are you? Merry Christmas. So today I'm going to talk about the compensation structure for quants in uh, Europe. Some of you have asked me this question, so I thought of making a video on that. Well, it depends on a lot of things. So I will uh, categorize this into you know two parts. So one part I'm going to talk about the compensation structure in more private funds. Um, in trading companies, investment companies, hedge funds, family offices and then um, the second part will cover uh, you know the compensation structure in, in big banks, fintechs, consulting firms, uh, boutique you know quant firms right so let's start with the compensation structure uh, what's the compensation structure uh, is in in the in the trading companies right okay uh, the thing is that uh, the uh, most of the trading companies in uh, in europe are located in few of the financial centers such as london um, paris amsterdam frankfurt and uh, some in in switzerland okay uh, so if you are located in any of these financial centers, obviously their salaries will be a lot more compared to if you are located somewhere else in Eastern Europe. Right? So, uh, you know, things may not be very accurate, but the numbers that I'm going to be talking about will be mostly for these financial centers. Right. I think most of the people who come from abroad to work in, in, in the financial service industry in Europe, they're located uh, in, in these places, either you know one of the nordic country switzerland uh, uk that is in london or uh, in amsterdam frankfurt paris you know these places um, sometimes also in spain i've seen also some people uh, working out of spain right and the compensation in london actually is you know quite high actually so it's it's significantly higher than even other financial centers so think things might you know be uh, somewhat here and there like 10 20 percent um more or less but i will try to um give an approximate uh figure as to what you could expect if you work as a quant in uh, in trading or investment firm in any of these uh you know places right as a beginner your salaries are not that great as in considering the fact that it's a very high pay profession um, you make um, more than you know other professions for instance more than people make in IT on average however it's still not quite great um, you know in many of the firms you start with a 60 70 K package obviously the bonuses are uh, quite good sometimes but it depends on the performance right uh, you're never never assured of uh, bonuses also let me tell you that your job security in trading firms investment firms is not that great hence uh, you know you understand the risk return reward right so you could expect you need to expect in fact more money if you if you're working in these sort of firms uh, but as a beginner actually you you can expect anywhere between 60 to 80k uh, as a beginner level salary uh, in these firms, the bonuses could be anywhere between you know twenty percent to even hundred percent, more than even hundred percent, depending on how you perform. Okay, um, in London you can expect more compared to elsewhere in Europe, as I've said. Uh, in uh, in um, you know big um, trading firms, the big ones like the Jane Street, um, you know Two Sigma in those places you could expect you know more fixed salary uh, compared to you know some of these uh, smaller uh, trading firms where the fixed salary could be less but uh, the bonuses could be uh, you know much higher than you know compared to the other uh, bigger firms but as you gain experience right if you move jobs or you you know you gain ex expertise you become a senior quant um, you could expect a huge increase in your salaries right the salaries could be anywhere between 100 more than 100k even 150k uh, euro 150,000 euro or 150,000 pounds in London um, and in some places even more than 200,000 pound or 200,000 euro right uh, and obviously you have performance link bonus which could be you know again 20% could be even 0% sometimes to even up to 100% or more than that 
right? Um, there are few research firms, like for instance, G Research, I know in London, they pay even up to uh, 400,000 or even 500,000 to some of the people, but they are very selective about who they hire. Not everyone can, you know, find jobs in those places. But there are many trading firms, asset management firms, where it's not that difficult to, you know, get a quant job, right? Uh, but obviously the pays are a lot less compared to, you know, this prop proprietary trading uh, forms or family offices where you know you, you could make a lot more but they don't hire many um, right uh, so if you work as a senior quant in these places you could always expect like you know more than 150k um, thousand euro or 150 thousand uh, pound as base salary right bonuses um, and perks can be you know on top of that um, you, if you work as a quant developer actually uh, it's not that lucrative but it's still quite lucrative as in you you still make quite good money right in in some places even the quant developers you know the tech people who work in trading they make more than the traders even uh, there are you know uh, many such people right it depends actually where you work uh, the bonuses are less um, for quant developers but the base salary is very similar to the quant traders and quant investor also uh, okay and it's also more stable job right um, uh, quant you know people working in quant development they have a plethora of opportunity they can move between any forms right uh, trading forms investment from, uh, agencies and they can work in anything in fact they can move out of finance and find jobs elsewhere which is probably not that easy for uh, the quants uh, not always actually right so that's about working in investment firms uh, or private uh, firms. But what about, uh, you know, the banks and insurance companies, the fintechs that hire perhaps the most number of quants anywhere in the world, right? Um, because the private firms, they don't have uh, many job openings. They do actually hire, but in term, in, 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 in compared to how many number of quants the banks hire, it's much less, right? So in, in banks, you know, in London or in Amsterdam, in Frankfurt, Paris, in these places, you will have so many international banks, European banks, US banks, Japanese banks, Australian banks, many other Asian banks like Singaporean banks, DBS, um, there are many, even in smaller firms, pension funds and all these you know, more regulated um, more regulated companies, right? They do not pay as much as, you know, the 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 private investment firms do pay but the jobs are more stable right and obviously the growth opportunities in long term are also quite good really good actually uh, if you become an executive in those places also you get quite good salary very good money um, and there are many opportunities there right but the starting salaries can be a bit painful right you start in uh, most of these banks in the UK if you work in the European banks the salaries are less compared to the American banks but then work-life balance is also a difference fact differencing factor the work-life balance in European banks uh, is much better compared to that in the US banks or even Japanese or Chinese banks um, you know there are also Chinese banks here in London um, you uh, yeah the starting salary could be you start with about 40 50k when you, you start right after your graduation your post graduation uh, but uh, you know if you move up you gain a couple of years of experience, you can make uh, more than 100,000 euro, 100,000 uh, um, pound, right? Uh, the career growth in, in quantitative field actually um, is quite steep. Um, like you become a senior quant in a matter of, you know, four or five years, uh, actually, uh, which is actually very rare in other fields. But in, in quant finance, I don't know what the reason is because I've seen most people move to become, you know, at least the smart ones, they move to become senior quants uh, and, you know, in, in a matter of four or five years. Um, there are obviously exceptions, uh, but that's the on average time uh, that it takes for you to become a junior quant to a, a senior quant. And that's when you make more than 100,000 pound or 100,000, uh, you know, euro. Uh, that's the base salary obviously on top of that you get uh, the bonuses and all so if you become a senior quant you will be making somewhere between you know 90,000 euro 90,000 pound to like let's say 100, 120, 130, 140 in that range in most of the big banks uh, in this part of the world 
uh, but also smaller banks you know uh, but if you're working for uh, you know more investment banks the big uh, the popular investment banks like UBS JP Morgan uh, Morgan Stanley Goldman Sachs these places you can uh, expect anywhere as a senior quant you can expect anywhere between 100 you know more than 100,000 to up to even 150 160,000 as a base salary bonuses are on top of that right so that's the salary range uh, that's similar salary range in insurance companies also um, you work for AIG MetLife any of these big insurance firm as a quant there also as a senior quant you can expect um, a salary anywhere between 100,000 200 30,000 40,000 in that range uh, as a base salary um, <clears throat> then uh, about consulting firms right there are many consulting firms which are specialized in quant consulting uh, in risk modeling but also in, in many other areas of uh, quantitative finance uh, big four consulting firms are quite popular they do not pay good uh, for freshers uh, they pay very little salary actually very bad salary 30,000 40,000 but the learning opportunities are quite good there hence uh, you know that compensates they train you on a lot of things you get to work but various big uh, corporations so your brand value becomes uh, better but after five years you know you, you either move out work as, as a senior quant in other places and your chances of being hired in those many pla other places uh, will be higher if uh, if you have worked in, in any of the top tier consulting firms such as you know kpmg and uh, pwc deloitte uh, oliver wyman mckinsey bcg you know these these places or there are some specialized consulting firms also quant consulting firms very reputed in this part of the world if you work at these places for instance if you work at foremost which is a very top uh, consulting firms in, in london um it's quite uh, quite quite good actually so there uh, yeah you, you can expect uh, as a senior after five years you can expect anywhere between you know 80,000 to about 130,000 so after you gain experience and become a manager senior manager which takes about six years I would say on average the salaries are good the bonuses can be very good but the best part of uh, you know working as a consultant in these places is that there's so much work actually in quant areas there's so much of work there's not um, not uh, many people are skilled in these areas uh, unlike in IT where you have so many um, people uh, fighting for jobs this is less actually because it requires skills in maths in programming uh, you should be able to write well because you need to write the regulatory documents uh, you need to know maths statistics finance and so many so areas right so it's it's considered a very high skill job so uh, the opportunities in consulting is all, all quite actually really good right uh, I know people who have become even director in those places in about eight to ten years time and and if you become a director in those places i think you get uh, salaries anywhere between 160 170 thousand uh, euro or pound to you know even uh, 250 in that range and if you become a partner uh, junior partner senior partner in those in that range then your salary can be you know lot higher that's like that means um, more than 400 thousand uh, in some cases even salaries uh, more than half a million in some places even almost a million salary you know including bonuses and pension and everything right so uh, also one other thing I, I forgot to mention is that in most of the European firms you'll also get a pension so you'll also get a money uh, deposited to your pension account by the company you'll also you, you also need to pay some part of it but most part of it will come from the company itself uh, so that's another perk that you get on top of your salaries and, and bonuses uh, you get also transportation um, you know uh, reimbursement money you get other perks as well um, okay uh, so that that's the range you can expect in consulting firms uh, not everybody like uh, consulting I know many quants do not like uh, consulting so they move to uh, um, banks where things are more stable and um, yeah in consulting uh, you know you really have to work hard really really have to work hard especially for the first six years 
uh, you really need to if you are very ambitious i think it's an amazing opportunity uh, consult working in consulting firms uh, is very good if you are really ambitious hard working and if you have good social skills um, uh, and if you understand both the quant world but also the business world of business then you will really grow well uh, in uh, in the boutique consulting firms there are not many but the ones where you have uh you could also get uh you know stock options and and those places uh those types of things um uh, which is also quite lucrative in fintechs uh salary can be uh, less for you know for junior people like other jobs i've said um but the opportunity to grow in fintechs is quite really good actually uh, compared to uh, you know the big banks uh, because you learn a lot you not just do quant activities in in these firms but also you work uh, on the product side on the risk side you talk to the front of you know the business people very often unlike in big banks where you could work in a back office not always then not everybody works uh, in those back offices but a lot of them too so it can be a bit boring after a while but in fintech actually is lot more interesting um so that compensates compensates for the you know the lower salary but as you grow you become important uh, you can make more money there also you can make more than 100000k in these places but also don't forget that in in fintechs you take take a chance you know uh, you take a chance uh, because you gain uh, shares you know in the stock option and all and if the valuation of the company goes up you make a lot of money but that doesn't always happen right um so there is a bit of uncertainty there but from fintechs you can always move to big banks but the other way around is not always easy right if i worked in big banks for 10 years then moving to fintechs is not very easy possible many people have done that but not always easy but if i worked in fintech you can easily move to any big bank consulting firm trading firms you know uh, so amazing actually the first 10 years i think Uh, if i was very young like i was in my 20 i would rather i i would rather start my career in a fintech firm because the learning opportunities are quite good right if you are very keen on trading investment that sort of activity then yes start with uh, the the proprietary firms uh, if you if you got a chance uh, not everybody is uh, can find jobs in those places but if if you have make a if you have a, a you have if you want to make a decision between a big bank or a fintech and you are young i think prefer a fintech right um but if you want a stable job then banks are also quite good right okay these are uh, some of the things i wanted to share with you regarding the compensation structure if you have any specific question as always don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section thanks for watching uh, and please do subscribe and uh, if you like the video also it helps So if you can do that uh, I'll really be uh, happy for that. So thanks and see you in another video guys.